Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Um, this is a way long overdue video, and I wanted to talk today uh, about the nursing field. Come on, you want to come up? Um, I have been a nurse in May, it'll be 21 years, and I have seen a lot of stuff in 21 years of being an LPN, and I was a CNA for five years before that, okay? So, um, let me start out by saying, come on, there's good nursing homes and there's bad nursing homes, okay? But one thing that I have noticed that never changes, no matter where you are, doesn't matter what nursing home you are, they always want you to work short-staffed. Now, they will go with the statement of minimal staffing, which is acceptable, okay? Um, so they'll say that, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, like a 40-bed unit, you should have, what you should have, you should have two nurses, okay, and you should have four CNAs, which are nursing assistants. And um, that should be your minimal staffing. And, you know, that, but a lot of times they consider minimal staffing, here, go on, baby girl. Um, they consider minimal staffing three CNAs and one nurse. Now, I don't know, you know, some of you out there are nurses and you probably have done a med pass. If you do a med pass on 40 people, meds and treatments, and then you're dealing with phone calls from family members, from the doctors, from the um, the clinics of uh, you know for the lab work um, that's been done, um, and let's not forget, heaven forbid, somebody falls or you know somebody. There, there's so many different things that can happen that just throw your whole day off, no matter what. Even if you're only doing 20. Okay, and you really truly can't give the kind of care that these people deserve with that kind of staffing. Now, um, I've worked day shift, I've worked evening shift, and I've worked night shift. And I've worked with some fantastic CNAs, hard, hard working CNAs. And then I have worked with some completely lazy, uh, you know, CNAs that just want to sit around in their behind. They want to sleep, they want to hide, they don't want to help the other CNAs. Uh, that, this is more on the night shift. I'm, the, what I'm, the statement I'm making now is on the night shift. You really can't hide and sleep so much on the evening shift or the day shift. But this is on the night shift. Um, you go in and, you know, these people are hiding, they're sleeping. Uh, I'm thinking of one particular CNA that I worked with um, at my last job. And, uh, and this is, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about this. This is awesome. Um, I had the CNA completely flip out on me, F-bombing me, just absolutely go nuts, screaming and yelling at the top of her lungs. Because I, I, I expected her to do her job. I mean, heaven forbid, right? So I reported it to uh, my nurse man or not my nurse manager, I reported it to the supervisor that, on that shift that night. And uh, there was three, three CNAs on that night, and so they all had to make statements. Well, the one was a float CNA, and uh, the other two girls were regulars on the floor. And they worked together all the time, and they hung out outside of work as well. Well, they sat down together and made their own statement. Uh, the other CNA made her original statement and then recanted and said, Oh, I didn't hear anything. I don't know what was going on when she was right there. Uh, and, you know, so my nurse manager the next morning came in. She pulled the two CNAs in the office and talked with them, never talked to me. To this day, has still never asked me what happened. So uh, what happened was I got moved off the unit. Now, and this is what I said to, to the supervisor at the time. I said, if I had flipped out on somebody, like she flipped out on me, I said, you would have walked me out of the building with security. End of story. They would have, and it should be that way. If you're going to act like that, you shouldn't be working with people, okay? If you have that kind of temper and you're flipping out like that. But, uh, so anyway, so they moved me off the floor, and guess who they got rid of? That's why I am no longer at my last job. Uh, once you make waves and expect people to actually do their job, then you're labeled a troublemaker, and uh, they get rid of you. So, um, you know, it, it's just, and that girl is still there. And I know she's still hiding and still sleeping and not doing her rounds and, 
it, it's ridiculous, but you know what? Karma will get her in the end, and that's the way I look at it. Karma will get that facility in the end, and I'm not going to name the facility because it doesn't really matter. Um, but and I'm sure they're watching still because they know I had a YouTube channel, so good for them. I hope I hope you take care of that CNA, and we all know who it is. Um, so you know it, it's it's sad because I work with some great people over there. But, you know, you just, it, it, the management is the issue. All the management cares about is making money. They pretend to care about the residents. They don't care about the residents. It's the bottom line is the money. And if they can have one nurse do the work of two nurses and only pay them what, the wages of one nurse, they're going to do it. And if you let them get away with it, they're going to do it, you know. Um, you know, when, when I worked nights over at the other place, you know, it was one nurse at night for 40 people because it's a lot down more downtime. I'm not saying that, but I'm talking evening shift, um, trying to do a med pass and treatments on that many people. There's a couple of units over there that um, where I worked before that are heavy trach units, a lot of uh, trach people on vents, and um, a lot of trach stuff going on, a lot of tube feedings. And they worked by themselves a lot, all the time, by themselves. And, and that, that was a unit that even at nights you needed to have uh, two nurses. And they all the time they screwed these nurses over. And see, so what you do is you burn out your staff. All right, There is a very high attrition rate in the nursing field. Uh, people get into the nursing field with the best of intentions, and then they find out what it's really like, and they're done. They can't take it because, you know, you can't give the kind of care that you, these people deserve. And that's what it comes down to. These people deserve to be taken care of. They've lived their whole lives, they've worked their whole lives, you know, now they're in a facility and with either Medicaid or whatever, and they're paying, you know, the, 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 it's, they're getting charged, I don't even know what it is a day, but it's a lot of money. Management needs to make sure that these people have enough nurses and CNAs to take care of these people. And if you do that, you're not gonna burn your staff out to a point where they go, screw it, I'm out of here. You know, and that's what happens, you know, and it's just, it's very, very frustrating. And, uh, and games, a lot of games go on, you know, a lot of politics, a lot of games. And like I said, you get these people that are in charge, and if you don't bow down and kiss their behinds, they're going to get rid of you. And I'm going to tell you what, I am an alpha male, and I make no bones about it. I speak my mind, I'm outspoken, I say it like it is, and I always have. And, you know, some people don't like that. A lot of people don't like that. They'd rather have you lie to them. I, I'm straight up. I'll tell you straight up. I don't pull punches, you know, but that's just the way I am. And uh, so I always run into issues because of this. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like if you, don't, if you don't advocate for yourself or advocate for your residents, who's going to? Nobody. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I just, I, I'm, I guess I'm too truthful. But the sad thing is, and I will say this, if it ever comes a point in my life that my children say to me, Dad, we can't take care of you anymore. We're going to put you in a nursing home. I'm going to take care of it myself. Because there's no way I would ever want to be in a nursing home. Um, I think that it is a horrible thing to do to a family member. Because they go there to die. And they know they're going there. That's their last stop. They're going there to die. And, you know, and I have some awesome, awesome residents that I deal with, and, I, and that's why I've stayed in LPN. I had a lot of people ask me, why haven't you gone on to get your RN? And I didn't want to be a pencil pusher. And I know a lot of RNs are going to get pissed off at me for saying that, but that's not what I got into nursing for. I did not get into nursing to be a supervisor, to push a pencil. I got into nursing to work with my patients, and that's why I've stayed in LPN all these years, and that's why I will continue to stay in LPN. Um, I like working with my residents. I love the interaction. I love to make them laugh. I love to make them smile and, you know, not think about the hell that they're in and that they're sitting around rotting waiting to die. It's, it's, it's a very frustrating field. Um, it's a very rewarding field. You know, I love being a nurse. And, I, you know, like I said, I've been in it all together 26 years, you know, five as a CNA and, uh, you know, 21 as, an, as a nurse. So, and I would encourage anybody to get into the field, you know. Um, I've talked to my daughter, and I told her I, what I would like her to do, um, you know, go get your four-year degree. Now you can be a nurse manager. Now you can be the boss, you know. Um, or if she wants to become a traveling nurse and go see the country. My God, she can go anywhere. I mean, traveling nurses make a ton of money, 
and they, you know, they put them up places, they send them, they ship them out, they pay for everything. They pay for their place to stay while they're there. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's the way to go. If you're going to get into nursing, my suggestion, if you're going to get into nursing, you know, if you want to travel, if you don't have kids, get your RN, get your experience someplace in a hospital, and then you can become a traveling nurse. That That is definitely the way to do it. Um, the, the cool thing about nursing is it's such a huge field. Um, I've done everything from dialysis to pediatrics to geriatrics to hospice. Um, I've done it all. So I've seen a lot, you know. Um, but like I said, I still enjoy it. I really do. And it's always about the residents. So anyway, so I want to put this video out. Uh, please tell me your thoughts. A lot of ex-nurses out there are still people that are nurses. You know, a lot of retirees and stuff that did it, you know. Tell me what your thoughts are. You know, share your experiences in the nursing field. I mean, there's a lot of really positive things, but there's a lot of really negative things. And a lot of it comes down to piss poor management. I mean, you know, they're not in the loop. They don't know. So, I mean, that a lot of time is the problem. But we need to take care of these people and make sure that they have enough staffing that they're getting taken care of properly in the way that they deserve to be. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you listening. And I hope you have a great day. Proper nurse one out for now.